An Aztec tradition that continues to be celebrated thousands of years later, talking about Day of the Dead. It's a chance for people to share in their grief, but also celebrate the lives of those we've lost, be it with a candle, a dance, or marigolds. Tonight, our John Quinones takes us to the largest celebration outside of Mexico. Music. Beauty. Respect. Honor. Dia de los Muertos. In English, it's Day of the Dead. But for these thousands of celebrants, it also means a loving tribute to life itself. This means life for me. Life? Yes. I think this tradition has a, a very uh, deep meaning because uh, through honoring our, uh, our dears, yeah. we, we experience life. Just that one last glimpse of being able to feel that person. It all started more than 3,000 years ago in Mexico with the Aztecs. They saw death as an ever-present part of life. I've been doing ballet folklorico since I was like one and a half. I've always loved the fact that it's not sad, it's a really happy event. We're welcoming back our ancestors. Today, here at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery in Los Angeles, Latinos and non-Latinos alike come together to celebrate. It's the largest Dia de los Muertos festivities outside of Mexico. This is not just for Latinos. Definitely not. Mm -hmm. I just feel like in my culture, like we don't really celebrate yeah. death in life, and it just feels like death, and so it's, it's therapeutic for me. I've actually had a lot of people ask me today, like, is it okay that we partake? Is it okay that we come and we get our faces painted and we wear the crowns? Um, and I think just asking that in the first place is like you're coming from a place of respect. Much of the rest of the world learned about this special holiday with the Disney movie Coco. Uh these aren't just old pictures, they're our family, and they're counting on us to remember them. As part of the tradition, families build custom altars honoring the unique traits of those who have passed on, including their loved one's favorite food and drinks. Jose Romero and his relatives are only part of the nearly 80 families who've created these beautiful, touching altars, all part of a festival competition. He worked through the night in the cemetery to bring this design to life. It's a tribute to his brother, Victor Hugo, who died of cancer six years ago. His mother, Hortensia. Nunca se le va a olvidar. You'll never forget. No, no, no. When I came here this morning, she says, I shed a few more tears. He was a very good man. There's a special reason Jose calls this altar coming home. We came here to this event. Uh, you brought him with you? Yes, yes. I was trying to like get him out, you know, enjoy the last days of his life. So he passed away knowing what all this was about? Yes. And he would turn around and say, are you going to do that for me? And now look what you've done for him, huh? Yeah. This is beautiful. You might win the competition, you know? Well, you know, I, I'm at a point where it's not even about winning. It, it's, it's about honoring him. Um, Hollywood Forever, Day of the Dead, gave him really beautiful experiences. Aside from the pictures, the candles, the food, and the drinks, the altars are also adorned with monarch butterflies and thousands and thousands of sempasuchis, marigolds, known as the flower of the dead. Legend has it that the bright colors of the petals of the marigold and their strong scent help guide the souls of the departed from the cemetery to their family homes. Angie Jimenez is director of altars for this special celebration at the cemetery. The theme this year, it's Quetzalcoatl, and Quetzalcoatl is synonymous with rebirth. Rebirth? Yes, that's what it is. The preparation has taken weeks. Some families sleep in the cemetery overnight to make the perfect offering to their ancestors. It's a way to show our kids to remember their ancestors, what they need. This year, the celebration is even more profound because of the devastating impact COVID has had on the Hispanic community. 
Ilian Herrera Fifita lost her cousin to COVID this summer. And just before that, she lost her beloved husband, John, to cancer. He was just 30 years old. This is our altar called Voces Forever. This is my cousin, Giovanni, and that's my husband, John. Her altar is a labor of love. She's been assembling it with her two sons, JT and Noah, five and two years old. My son drew that picture. He was super excited to put his little picture up there. So I think it kind of helps bring us closer to our loved ones, and I think it helps when, you know, during the grieving process. The altar designed by Richard Saldivar honors those in the Latino community who have died from complications due to AIDS. AIDS had such a horrible stigma to it. As Latinos, we were taught certain things. Don't, don't talk too loud because the neighbors will hear. Or, you know, whatever happens in this house will stay in this house. And for many of our men who died who were gay, we didn't want people to know that we had homosexuals passing from AIDS. By nightfall, spiritual processions bring native dancers, incense, music, stirring drum beats echoing throughout the cemetery. Jose's coming home is awarded the prize for best contemporary altar. But the awards aside, this celebration is all about gratitude for loved ones who have graced our lives and then departed, always way too soon. In Los Angeles, John Quinones, ABC News. Our thanks to John for that. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel and don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.